besides what you see here behind me in Kensington Gardens is an artwork for pollinators. That may look like a garden, but it's actually designed by an algorithm. So the planting is not arranged according to what I like. It's optimized for insects' tastes. Insect pollinators like bees and butterflies, moths and even wasps are able to spread their seeds by wind like grasses, but many plants with flowers can't do that. So when I was asked to make a sculpture about pollinators, I thought that there might be a better thing to do, which would actually be to make a sculpture for pollinators, to use the resources of making a sculpture and actually divert them into something that's useful. And the idea is to use this algorithm to maximize pollinator diversity. So rather than just creating a bee or butterfly friendly garden, the idea is to attract diversity across the year and provide forage for everyone. If you go to pollinator.art, you can put in your garden conditions. It doesn't matter if you don't have a garden, you can make an imaginary one. And then you can put in the conditions. So what is the soil like? Is it sunny or shady? Is it sheltered or exposed? And then you can play with what I call this empathy algorithm. And as you play with it, you can choose to have more species in your planting or fewer species, a bolder, more intricate pattern. And then finally, whether you have more paths or more patches. So some insects like bees memorize the location of all the plants they visit, whereas beetles just bump into stuff. Then you can explore the, the planting, the artwork that's been created. So you can fly through this generated garden and experience it like a pollinator. So you can see it in different seasons as the year passes through from winter through to summer and back to winter again. And you can also plant your own living artwork. So if you press a button, you can download a PDF that it has a unique edition number for the artwork and instructions and a shopping list. And the result is perhaps too aesthetically pleasing for us to prove the point, but that's maybe because we've evolved to like flowers. But the arrangement itself of all the different plants is unusual. You've got tall things next to small things, all sorts of colours crashing in together. And the result is a living artwork. I call this the anti-NFT because, you know, it is a digital artwork, it's online, but the tool online is really just a tool and the actual artwork is whatever you plant. Normally we think about technologies as something that we create for our own benefit and I'm curious about whether we can create technologies to be altruistic, to benefit other species, for example, and obviously indirectly benefit us.